I want to have an honest talk about George Floyd. Now, don't get me wrong. What happened to George Floyd was terrible, and it was disgusting, despicable. But one thing after reading about this man is that even though his death was horrifying, I don't agree with the martyr thing that people are portraying him to be. I don't think he is a upstanding citizen to the black community. I don't think his face um, should be plastered on T-shirts and hats. You know, if you want to stand up for uh, police brutality, that's one thing. But in terms of the guy himself, he was a scumbag. Um, but and I'll talk about why I feel that way. He was a scumbag. So, so George Floyd, for people who don't know, obviously everybody knows of him because of his murder. But let's talk about George Floyd, shall we? So George Floyd was many things. He was a rapper. He did some adult films. You know, I'm not judging him on that. It is what it is. But this man has also been in jail plenty of times. Um, he, between 1997 and 2005, he went to jail for different, uh, about eight different prison terms for charges, including drug possession, theft, and trespass. And then in 2009, here's the kicker 2009, uh, he was sentenced to five years. So, what happened was him and his buddies went to go rob a pregnant woman. So, one of his buddies, uh, you know, dressed up as a, a water. Uh, employee for like the it was like the water department employee so he knocked on this lady's door and said I'm here to fix your water line and when she opened the door they came busting up in there George Floyd and them ran up in there and they ransacked the place it was a robbery George Floyd pulls out a gun and puts the gun to her stomach and this is a pregnant woman we're talking about so and I'm not saying that if it was anybody else it'd be different but we're talking about a defenseless Women who's carrying her unborn child um, So they ransacked the place Can't find any drugs Guns, money So they still her wallet on her phone And he threatened her That uh, if she yelled a scream He put one in her So How do you feel about it? Because man I, I'm i not about to start up, up praising criminals Just because um, You know Celebrating Not celebrating um, talking about police brutality is one thing, but I've learned to separate the person from the media. And George Floyd, in itself, I can't support him. Um, where'd you get all that from? Uh, it's on Wikipedia. Um, and there's been a bunch of um uh, news sources coming out about it. Um, because one of the other things that came out was, you know, obviously people think he. You know, it's been like five years since five, six years since he did his last prison stink. But when they did the autopsy report after his death, they found methamphetamine and another drug in the system. Um, and then he apparently had a baggie of drugs on his person as well. Um, but that's the stuff that came out. And all of his case and stuff is public too. Right. Well, all right, hold on, because because now that's actually you know making me look up the information myself. This is uh, yeah, yeah. I just um, obviously I I can't really find out all that information in such a short amount of time. But what I will say is that um, it doesn't make me look any. It doesn't make me look at that situation. Um, that occurred with the police officer any different. All right. Um, how long ago were those instances? Um, from 1997 to 2005, and then his last prison stint was five years. So that would have so the last. So when was the last time he, he actually committed a crime? Uh, 2009, and he came out of jail 2013. Okay, and then that situation that you were talking about with the with that was the five year prison, uh, prison, which which took place when uh two thousand nine, and the, what was the times before that? Uh, the other times it was all between nineteen ninety seven two thousand five. Okay, all right. So then, now, not saying that this is this you know is specifically the case, but I'm just gonna go ahead and give him the benefit of the doubt. So let's say if you're somebody who 
you know, lived a life like a criminal life, you know, you were a criminal and, you know, let's say you go to jail, you lived your life, you made those mistakes, you go to jail and let's say you come out of jail. And I mentioned this before where, you know, there's people who come out of jail and they're held accountable for their crimes for the rest of their life because it's difficult for most people who were convicted to get a job, right? Right. How would that make you feel if ever since you're released from jail, people always pinned you as that guy that you were in 2009, that guy that you were in the 90s, despite the fact that you know for a fact if, you know, given, you know, the chance you would take those things back or you probably wouldn't do that? Um, It's a tricky one, but honestly, it's one of those things where, you know, you kind of... talking about you, so take other people out of the equation. I'm talking about you specifically. Like, if, if you lived a certain life, you did the time and you came out, you know, a completely different person and you obviously are, you know, remorseful and you wouldn't do those things. Hypothetically, how would you feel if I looked at you as the same guy that you were before you went to prison? Um, you good. I wouldn't blame you. I wouldn't blame you. I think I understand um, that. But like, but how I, would that make obviously you- everybody who comes out of jail feel wrong, but it doesn't take away from it's like if a if a rapist coming out of jail, like for instance, Jerry Fogel. He might feel remorseful, but that doesn't take away the fact that he, you know, abused a bunch of kids. So, I, I, I mean, I feel bad for him, but at the same time, that's a stigma you're going to have to carry on for the rest of your life. Well, obviously, because, you know, you you ultimately are, you know, the, you're the harbinger of your life. You know, you control your own choices. You know, obviously, you know, he made his choice. However, I don't think that his criminal background, you know, makes me look at, again, that situation any different right you know than than it was because again that was that happened in 2009 and then prior to that was the 90s and he got out of jail in 2013 so that was seven years between the day he got out of jail in 2020 and has he committed any crimes since uh no besides the so besides that crime the only thing that happened was when he when he died that day he had drugs in the right so then that was seven years of of absolutely nothing Right. So this is what I'm saying. So to me, you know, his criminal background and his criminal, you know, past to me is irrelevant to what happened to him and what ultimately led to his death because that's not why that's not why the cops were after him that day. Right. No, you're if right. If the police were after him for something that he that he did recently, then all right, cool. Or something connected to his past, then cool, connected to the past all you want. But because because of the fact that He's not, he wasn't, you know, in police custody for anything that had to do with his past. It had nothing to do with it. I don't look at, I don't really look at it any different. Well, so uh, a couple of things. I think, I, first of all, I'm not saying he deserved to die, but I think the paying him as a, uh, you know. Oh, he's not a martyr. <laughs> he's not an upstanding. No, no, George like Floyd is a victim. He's not a martyr. There's a difference between being a martyr because a martyr is you're living your life you know, knowing that you were going to die for a cause. George Floyd didn't wake up that morning knowing that he was going to die, you know, from police. Most of the people, like Jonathan Price, all these people that have, you know, gotten shot, killed, brutalized by police, they're not martyrs. They're victims. Right. You know, Malcolm X was a martyr. No, Martin Luther I, well, King was a martyr. Well, let these me... The guys who, 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 who pretty much died on a particular hill. Well, I'm not saying... Been, Martyrs. I'm not saying George Floyd thought he was a martyr. The people who's painting him to be a martyr, an uh, upstanding black citizen, you know. I, well, well I think- like I said, for seven for for seven years he didn't commit a crime. So as far as I'm concerned, for seven years he was an upstanding citizen if he didn't do anything. The, right, past, so- the past was the past, and ultimately that was part of his life. But at the end of the day, that had nothing to do with what happened that particular day. And it's asinine to constantly bring that up. Yeah. All right. So let me. Let me give you exa- let me give you a personal story. So my mm-hmm. brother, my brother was killed June uh, of this year, and he was killed by someone driving eighty in a residential district. Now this guy had had a convicted felon, a felony on his record, um, and he fled the scene. And I'm not saying this is what George Floyd did, but if let's say two Damn, years from now, man. two two years from now, if the police catch him and kill him in custody. Will I feel bad for him? Absolutely. But I can't separate that man 
from the victim. I think the guy himself deserved that because he killed my brother and he left. So for that lady that he put the gun to her stomach on, she when she sees George Floyd's name all over social media, um, she sees people, oh, George Floyd was a good man. He lived a good life. And you see well, that? Uh, yeah, obviously not. That's because, disgusting. Yeah, you're you're that you're you're practically a part of that situation. Like, let's see what happened to your brother, because I never even, you know, I never actually even knew you know, knew that because you know I didn't ask, obviously. Right, but, right. But you're that's your brother. I I have you know no qualms for for you feeling the way that you feel. You're supposed to feel like that was your brother. You're pretty much a part of that situation because that happened to somebody that close to you. So now when it comes to that, you know, pregnant woman, that's pretty much on her, whether she chooses to forgive him or not, that's really solely on her. You know, right. me, I'm not a part of either situation, but I can only look at it objectively. I'm not going to say that if she hates this guy's guts and feels like she deserves it, you're, you're not wrong for that because I wasn't there. I don't know how he made you feel in that particular situation, which right. wasn't a good situation at all. So I, I get that. But me being that I'm not, I'm just a completely removed, you know, third party. I'm just looking at that seven years isolated. And I'm looking at that particular instance isolated. Cause right. he's not the only one that's happened to where he's had a criminal background and then he got into it with police and it didn't go well. Because right. as far as I'm concerned, I think Eric Garner didn't have the most perfect background either. As far right. as I know, you know, like I said, I'm not I'm not the expert on, on these situations, but the guy was selling just selling cigarettes. You know what I'm saying? He, yeah. And let's say he might have had a criminal background where he might have stole cars or, you know, was involved with gangs or sold drugs or whatever. It, 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 and you see what I'm saying? Like, it, yeah. it doesn't rationalize or, or justify anything, you know, in my eyes, because, again, when you're looking at it from the situation of you're a victim of what this person did to you, you're just you're you're not you're not wrong for feeling the way that you feel because and no one can tell you how you're supposed to feel if they weren't there and even right. if they were there you you're you know what I mean you're your own person so right. just for me I'm just looking at it like look dude came out of prison could have came out a different person and you got 7 years that says that he didn't do anything to you know put himself back in you know that criminal setup or you know position and unfortunately he got into that situation, which had nothing to do with his criminal background, and he got killed. Right. George Floyd is not a martyr. He was a victim, period. Right. I think people painting him as a martyr is wrong because we don't have any martyrs. We don't have, I've been saying this since the beginning, we don't have any martyrs that are willing to die on the hill of, you know, the fact that police brutality against Black people is wrong. We don't have anybody. You know, unfortunately, the people that are dying are people who wake up that morning, you know, they didn't wake up that morning knowing that that was going to be their last day alive. Right. You know, really. So that wasn't a hill that they chose to, that that wasn't a hill of their choosing, you know, because right. I'm pretty sure if all these victims had their way, they would still be alive today. So. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's what I'm saying isn't so much um, don't protest for him, but I think, you know, trying to paint him as a uh, a good figure for the black community is not ideal because even uh, I think I think people are uh, I never got that I think people are just painting him as a victim that should still that was wrongfully killed and should still be alive today it should be remembered in a in a in another symbol of what's been continuously happening over and over and over again because most people would tell you that Trayvon Martin you know was a, a, a hooligan. And they did that. The media did that. Yeah, the, the, most like a lot of these scenarios, the the rebuttal and the response is that, oh well, look what this person you know was doing with themselves before that. All right, but look at look at these guys who go to synagogues and churches and kill people. Yeah, they're still alive. They're still alive today. Don't know how that's happening, how come, but and, and and you look at their background, it's not it's not clean either. How come they don't get a fair shake at life? A yeah. lot of these dudes, they get to go to jail and sit for the rest of their life. You know, one or two meals a day, however it is that they do it, and then they get to live to tell the tale. Right. It's not yeah. that's what I that's what I'm saying. So I think I don't think that they're saying that George Floyd is LeBron James. <laughs> I, I I haven't seen that. I ain't seen that. But for me, like I said, he's just 
he's just he has now become you know another face unfortunately right. wrongfully so because he died before his time right absolutely 100 percent. Trayvon martin died before his time george zimmerman probably probably say oh well you know he was a hooligan he did this he was a gang member he was doing this he was doing that so what with all these mass shooters they make pit stops for them on the way to the station yeah Dude, it's unfortunate. Hey, yeah. Dude in Kenosha, he's not in jail. He's not even in jail. Dude's not even in jail. And yeah. you went out with an AR and shot people. But that was the dude that um, it, this was the protest like a month ago, right? Something like that. Yeah, Kenosha. Kenosha was like a month, month or so ago. Now, is that the one where the it was a white kid, right? That yeah, went to and protest. The police saw him on the way there with the guns and didn't do anything. I saw the video. So apparently with that situation, uh, I read about it. Um, he didn't. So what happened was he went to the protest um, to help local business owners, you know, protect their business. And two people attacked him, which triggered him to shoot people. Now, I'm not saying he should have brought a gun with him, but people did attack him, which is why he why shot. Why did they attack him? Um... I think they didn't want him to be there. It wasn't like he put the Probably gun in their face. And, people. Yeah, and that's the issue. I'm so not saying what, him carrying a gun was right, but yeah, yeah, if someone protests, attacks you. Yeah, these pro these protesters, it's not like it's like I said in, in, in one of the podcasts before. When when these protests are turning violent, it's because these protesters are only doing what's being doing to them. Especially if you probably walk up to somebody and be like, "Yeah, this person's dead. You know, they're they're dead because they're supposed to be dead." Or, "Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad whoever you're the the life that you're protesting about is dead. I'm glad this person is dead." And people are supposed to just stand there and take it. Some people they're not. They they just don't have the fortitude to do that. You get disrespected. I'm like I said, most of these. Pro- I I do not. I firmly do not believe that people are going to these protests with the intention of protesting and also to to beat people up and be bullies. That's kind of productive unless it's like deep state. Antifa guys that are there to you know create smoke and mirrors, but I, I highly doubt that shit. Yeah, the the, the whole Antifa thing in the, in the video, and you you see the videos of police bullying them. Yeah. So again, it's, and especially dudes showing up there with a gun to a protest, and then you're not here protesting with us. Why are you the only one with a gun here? What are you doing here? Right. Oh, yeah. I'm supposed to be here. This is my town. Y'all get out. Like, come on, man. Like. No, no, no. You 100%. I agree with you. But I think... I'm pretty sure that was... I'm pretty sure that that was the case. Like It nine, probably did happen like yeah, that, but... Nine times out of ten, I'm, I'm pretty sure that was the case. And he shot people. He killed people. And I don't I don't give a damn if that was an open carry state or not. Because, like I said, I mean, I just hate the fact that he was only one with the gun. And none of the protesters there was armed either. So, let's say if Kenosha, uh, Wisconsin is an open carry state, I'm very upset to hear that... He was the only one with a gun there, and these protesters had no protection against guys like that. Yeah, it's unfortunate, it, but it, it's it, it's wrong because you have people who, who come there purposely with a gun to antagonize y'all. Like, yeah, I, I say the most disrespectful, you know, vile, most putrid shit. And then, like, oh, the minute you guys try to come check me, I'm popping y'all asses. That that was his, I'm pretty sure that was his mindset. And this dude's not even 25 years old. Yeah, please didn't please didn't care. Why am I showing up to a protest with an, with an AR? Well, so here's I'm my, not there to protest. Hey, here's I'm, my take. I'm not, I'm not in support of the protest. No, just, just real quick, answer that question. Like, what is the rationale of you showing up to a protest and you're not there in support of the protest with, with an assault rifle? Well, so I'm not going to defend him carrying an assault rifle, but I'm seeing a lot of people are, if that's his community, what's happening is a lot of these protests are turning into riots. So, you know, people That's not his job. Building. It's not, but if it's people... not his job. Who 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 de- who made him the designated freaking terminator? That's not your job. Yeah, you but you tell me the police didn't see that and say, "Oh, okay, so he's not clearly he's not a protester and he's got this AR and he's like between 18 and 21 years old. What's he about yeah. to do with that?" I I saw I saw that he video. Uh, them, yeah, if I'm just walking past, I'm not defending a man, but I think no, I, I'm, I'm not saying you are. But what I'm trying to figure out is if you can give me a valid reason as to why somebody would show up with an AR. 
I don't give a shit if it's your community. There's law enforcement for clearly they were there. They're not, they're not, they don't, they run their guns blazing. You don't want their guns blazing. My point is this dude's not even in jail, but George Floyd is for doing not even a half percentage of what this dude did. Well, I think the, I don't know why he, he's not in jail, but I, I think the that's reason. That's why he's not in jail. Yeah, it could. That's yeah, why he's not in jail. Be. That's a, it's not, it's not. But it's facts. Let me, let me ask you facts. a question. How many yeah, people did he kill? Do you know? Huh? How many people did he shoot at? You'd be the one to tell me that. Like, all I know is that he killed people. Okay. Because I'm not, I'm not sure how many people he killed. But I know no, the I, reason why he started shooting was because people started hitting him. So, right, and I just, and that's the thing. So now I'm giving you more than likely legitimate context. So I said, why would you show up to a protest and you're not in support of a protest with a gun? You came there to shoot people. Yeah. I, you, 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 you want to smoke. So I'm going to show up to a, a rally with people that I know I don't like. So let's say I go to a KKK rally with a gun and I'm black. And all I know, all of these people hate me. So what am I? What you already know what I'm going to do with that gun? I'm I'm there to antagonize people by standing there. And the minute that they say or do something to me, I'm shooting them. That was it. And there were no yeah. con- and there and there were absolutely no consequences. It's not fair. Yeah. It's not fair. So this is why you see people making T-shirts with George Floyd's face on there because because of things like that. That's that's to me. That's exact. That's exactly why. So it's not that he's he's a reminder. He's a reflection of this lopsided, you know, society. I don't care about. I don't care about his past. I don't care about none of that because right. I see this dude. What he's doing here and now today did way worse than than, than what freaking George Floyd did. No one cares. You got people shooting up schools, shooting yeah. up churches, shooting well, up churches. Shooting up churches. Oh, can we st- can we stop somewhere for you before we go down to the station? Yeah. Crazy, crazy looking dude. There was the guy who went to, um, the 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 per- one of the premieres for the Aurora shooting. I forgot what state that is for for Dark Knight Rises back in 2012. Oh went up, yeah. Went up in the theater and shot everybody. Yeah, yeah. Is he is he a, is he dead? No, he's in jail. They didn't kill him though, right? Oh, but if I sell cigarettes and the cop tells me. You know, stop yeah. selling cigarettes. I get killed. But you mean to tell me he went to a movie theater? No one, no one else was armed. We're probably like one emergency exit that people probably couldn't get to fast enough. And, and just he let him up. Fire on people. He yeah. opened fire on people. And you mean to tell me he's still alive? Damn. And then the only rationale that someone can think of for the contrary is the fact that George Floyd got a criminal background. Yeah. Trayvon Martin got a criminal background. Sandra Bland was talking shit. Jonathan Price tried to break up a fight. Breonna Taylor just knew. Somebody that w- was in a relationship with somebody that was doing something wrong. Yeah. Come on, bro. There, there is no valid rebuttal to any of that. Everything that that has taken place for decades. Well, we're going to talk about the last ten years because in the last ten years is like this new era of like police brutality and violence against black people. Everything that's been happening is absolutely wrong, and you can 100%. see what who and what the system is in favor of yeah period because i bet you i bet you let me go to uh you know let me be mr anti-trump let me be mr anti-kkk and let me show up to one of their freaking you know rallies with a with an ar in an open carry state and let me open fire on them and let's see if i live to see let, let's see if i make it to the station let's see we all know you're not exactly yeah and that is white privilege Yeah, well...